more and more as his career progresses, even at 32 years old, although he doesn't have the quickest hands, but a very sharp and accurate puncher. Yeah, and a moment ago, we saw some signs of good defense by him. Kessler threw a good series of combinations, and Fox was able to slip them. Kessler's being very aggressive in this round, and there's the hook, but he just can't land something dramatic. And like in the Andre Ward fight, Kessler having a hard time getting that extra six inches closer to Carl Frock. And you know what? His trainer Montoya needs to tell him it's time for him to make adjustments. He's been doing this for the first four or five rounds. It was working somewhat in the beginning, but if he wants to win this fight and dominate his fashion, he got to do something different. Now he backs Frotch up to the ropes. And Frotch will tie him up. To some degree, that something different is the combination punching, which he is trying now, but he just hasn't been able to land them as effectively as he would like. Round six, scheduled for 12 here at the MCH Center in Herning, Denmark. This for the WBC Super Middleweight World title. The champion is in the black trunks. Carl Frotch, the challenger and former WBA champ, Mikkel Kessler is in the white. Good solid jab by Kessler. Fifteen seconds to go here in the sixth round. A lot on the line for both of these gentlemen. And that's the end of the round. Kessler that got in there because Frotch left his hands low. There were moments in that last round where Kessler was able to land effectively, but you see the countering by Frotch. And for Kessler, when he exposes himself, sometimes it's an issue, but not when he lands those sharp right hands. Round ske seven, scheduled for 12. And Al, how do you have this fight scored so far? I've got Frotch leading 58-56, but I believe it could be dead even and the, many of those rounds are very close so let's factor in um, where they're fighting and I agree with Al the fight is definitely close both fighters have had some moments uh, I just feel that uh, Frotch is able to counter Kessler because he stands straight there after he gets done working and we've seen both men land Really, really good right hands, and neither has been dramatically hurt by the punch. Although maybe Kessler was stunned a few rounds ago. No, I, th I thought he took those right hands well. And right before this, Kessler came over top of Frotch's jab hand with his right hand, and I think that punch will work for there, him. And there's another one by Kessler a moment ago. Frotch using the jab like a whip just to keep Kessler on the outside. Kessler has been trying to figure out how to get inside that jab. Going to the body for most of this fight with jabs and right hands. Mikkel Kessler and every now and then, like that time, landing a short left hook. You know, this has been a good beginning first half of the seventh round for Mikkel Kessler. At a time when he needed, I think, something to boost his confidence a bit. And he's had it here in this minute and a half. And Frotch really slowing his offensive pace now. And he better be careful about that because he talked about not wanting to let this go to the scorecards. Yeah, with these the rounds being so close, you never know. I mean, and, and let's not forget, he's in Denmark. 
And in this round, perfect example, Kessler being very effective with those good jabs and everything else. Carl Frotch, as you mentioned, Dow, has been a fighter that prides himself on being able to come back late in fights. That's when he'll catch a second win, and that's when you'll quite often see his best. Blood now on the face of Mikkel Kessler on his trunks as well. Kessler cut during the Andre Ward fight, so he has been prone to cuts and bleed it. I didn't see any uh, a significant blow that would have caused a cut, so we'll have to stay tuned and see how the referee scores it. Oh, big right hand by Kessler. Crotch says it hit on the back of the head. Now Kessler moving in. He's gaining confidence. Kessler loading up on his punches now, and that's the end of the seventh round. A very good round for Mikkel Kessler. Fighting in his homeland of Herning, Denmark. I want to relax, listen to me. I don't want you in the middle, and I don't want you, I want you to stop putting those companies together. You're not tired. No. All right, baby. Give me some yeah, action. Just think and put your combinations together. When you're close, I want you to fight him. There's a lot of fighting time. Mikkel Kessler had himself a very good round in the last round. Landing shots, throwing lots of combinations. That jab, very strong by Kessler. His left hook, he's not throwing as well as he normally does. That's the punch that Frotch complained about toward the end of the round. Rachel, the uh, girlfriend of Carl Frotch, you saw her a moment ago. And by the way, they've announced that she is going to have a baby. So Carl Frotch is going to be a dad. So even more on the line for Carl Frotch, riding in front of Rachel, knowing that he has a child on the way here. The Super 6 World Boxing Classic is WBC Super Middleweight title. On the line, Frotch trying to defend it for the third time in the black trunks against the challenger and former WBA champion, Mikkel Kessler. And in the corner, Mikkel Kessler's trainer, Jimmy Montoya, telling him, you're not tired. Give me some action. I want you to fight him now for these rounds. And here's where Jimmy Montoya and Antonio and I discussed this. He's a motivator. And here's the way Mikkel Kessler can win this fight, by throwing lots of punches, being aggressive and having the will to do it. That's exactly what Jimmy Montoya is trying to get him to do. And he's pressing right now. He's throwing yep. that big hoop, that big looping hook, <laughs> and he's keeping the aggression up, and that's great. One thing Carl Frost didn't want to do is allow this crowd to yeah. be a factor. And Al, Carl Frost's punch production is starting to go down. He doesn't look as busy as we saw him early. Yeah, and it usually goes the other way for him. Here we are in round eight, normally he's picking up the pace. And he's reaching with a lot of those punches. He's off balance. I mean, he needs to tighten up his offense right now if he's going to take this uh, fight from Kessler right now because Kessler is gaining momentum. Now, I've very close. I've got Frotch still ahead by one point, but it could easily be a different set of scores by the judges at this juncture. Boy, do we know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we've seen that two twice, haven't we? Pay attention. <laughs> Carl Frotch hasn't thrown his right hand in quite some time. He's been using... The jab, the hook, throwing it under and over, but the right hand is something that during this round yep. we haven't been seeing him use. That's a real oh, oh my. my nice staggering right hand He's by hurt. Kessler, and Frotch is hurt. Frotch's legs wobbling. Frotch trying to clear his head, blinking his eyes, now keeping his hands up. Kessler, can he finish him? Frotch knocked down only one time in his entire career against Jermaine Taylor in his first title defense. Frotch, blood now on the bridge of his nose. Kessler putting his punches together. Gus, that could mean a broken nose with that straight right hand. It was nice, it was short, and it was picture perfect. No snap on Frotch's punches. 14 seconds to go. Kessler going downstairs. And a cut on the bridge of the nose of Carl Frotch. 
As we come to the end of the eighth round, what a round for Mikkel Kessler. And here's a man, Mikkel Kessler, that comes into this fight desperate. He knew that he would have to come in with a sense of urgency. You know, one thing about being a champion, a real mark of a champion, is how you come back from defeat. And we see here the short right hand by Kessler. Franz came in and squared himself up, which he talked about in the keys to victory. When he does that, he's available for the right hand by Kessler. And there it landed, wide open, and Kessler, who is a natural counterpuncher, took advantage of that. Head bomb is working for you. When you get the chance, take the shot. I only got I want plenty of head movement, plenty of glove movement. Some concern on Rachel's face as she is in the distinct minority in this crowd and she is watching her man in some anxious moments. This is the Super Six World Boxing Classic, the WBC Super Middleweight World title on the line here at the MCH Center in Herning, Denmark. The champion. Carl Frotch from Nottingham, England, is in black. The challenger, Mikkel Kessler, fighting at home in the white trunks. Kessler starting to come on as we start the ninth round. And one of the interesting things, and this is what makes this tournament and this fight <laughs> dramatic, is we know Carl Frotch is capable of last-minute heroics. We saw it against Jermaine Taylor. So that's what sets this up, I think, as a very interesting scenario, even with Kessler doing so well here. Frotch with a cut on the bridge of the nose, blinking his eyes almost as if he's still trying to clear his head after that Kessler short right hand in the eighth round. And of course, that Jermaine Taylor fight, not a part of our tournament. It happened just before it, but it demonstrates what Frotch is capable of. And I'm going to go on record and say that I'm pretty sure that his nose right now is broken. It looks like it's shattered almost, and, he's, and that might cause that the bridge of his nose to swell up where it might cause a problem with him breathing if this fight goes further. Now in this round, Frotch has gotten his jab out of mothballs, and he's tried the uppercut a few more times, which is a very good punch for him, but doesn't land all the time, and there you see Frotch being more aggressive. A lot of slapping, though, by Carl. Frotch not really turning his punches over like he did earlier in the fight. And there's the slow hands, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah, that, that was the right hand that Kessler can counterpunch at any given time. Kessler very sharp. Defense still tight. The body attack, the body attack has worked for him this evening, Adam. Yeah, Kessler has, has gone very well downstairs, and that may be part of what slowed Frotch down in this fight. See that winging right hand? That's not normally uh, the type of punch that you see coming from Kessler. I don't know where that's coming from. He needs to get back sharp like he was a year and a half ago. He's a slightly different fighter. You're absolutely right about that. Not quite as precise. Nickel Kessler taking more chances, showing that he wants to continue. There's that His right career. hand. There it is. Excuse me, Gus. That's a right hand that a counter punch from Kessler that when he comes in, when he squares himself up, Frotch, Kessler can land. And it's real sneaky because Frotch seemed to have his head down. And he can't see that punch. Left uppercut landing for Kessler. Now a left hook landing for Frotch. Double left hook landing for Frotch. Kessler can counterpunch Frotch when he's up in the air like that, throwing those punches with a left hook, but he has to be short and sweet with it. Wow. And that's the end of the ninth round. Listen, be smart now. Listen, he'll try and box with you for a minute now. You've got to be smart, but you've got to apply the pressure. One, two, hooks, double jab, right hands, and then short when you're there. Deep breath, so okay. bad cut. Yeah, really bad, but you've got to work this good now. I know, but Carl, big him up, you know, you've got to work. Relax, relax. That's a head mark. Time. You Carl, see, as we head into these championship rounds, Frotch being very 
aggressive in that last round. The first portion of the round, a very good round for him, as evidenced by those jabs. But Kessler still landing good counter punches. And when he comes in squared up, Kessler lands some right hands.